Today I'm gonna to compare two of the best tablets that are available on the market right now. I have the new Dell XPS 13 2-in-1 and the iPad Pro. This is the M1 12.9 inch with the XDR display. Now, both of these are great, but you can't really compare them based on specs alone because they're just so different. On one end, you have Windows 11 running in, in its full version with endless possibilities. And on the other end, you have iPad OS, which is optimized and limited in a lot of ways because it's iPad OS. So I'm not gonna talk about specs so much as I'm gonna talk about experience with both of these devices. There are elements of their specs that stand out, and I'll mention a few of those things, like the display, the cameras, the battery life, stuff like that, that are important, but I'm not gonna get too into the weeds on things except for the performance of certain applications that I used quite often that definitely were better in some respects depending on what device I was using. So the reason that I ended up purchasing an XPS 13 2-in-1 is because I want a proper operating system on a tablet. Apple, please. I want to be able to do everything that I can on a laptop on a tablet. And that's because the performance is here. This has an M1 chip. It has the same chip in it that a Mac Mini has that's behind me. And on that Mac Mini, I could do lots of things and do them well because of the size of the chip in that thing and its performance. And of course, over here on the XPS side, the chip that's in here is really great and powerful for what it is, albeit not as powerful as the M1 chip, and definitely not able to do as big of heavy lifting as I might be able to do with the M1, but I'm sacrificing because I'll have a little bit less performance over here, but I will have less capability over here on the iPad because of the uh, the iPad OS. So I'm gonna talk about the general usage first, which is what I typically would go to a tablet for. Most of the time when I go to grab my tablet, it's because I'm maybe heading to a coffee shop or something like that. Uh, I wanna go work from somewhere else other than my office. And I know I'm gonna be doing simple things like responding to emails, browsing the web, doing some research for another video, and stuff like that. And so both of these devices are super capable for either of those. That's just basic usage. I definitely don't even need like an iPad Pro to do stuff like that. I can use a lower end iPad even and accomplish all of those tasks and be just fine. Uh, where it comes to needing extra performance is for doing things like photo editing, video editing, uh, recording and editing podcasts, and stuff like that where I need more processing power. But then I run into issues between uh, kind of not having full capabilities in some apps on an iPad and having full capabilities on a device like this but not having the performance that I would have in a bigger laptop or a desktop that had more uh, GPU, more graphics processing power. For my traditional, just basic usage, I definitely don't find much of a difference between these two devices. I love the keyboard and the layout of the keyboard on the XPS. The XPS has always had great keyboard layouts, and being that this is a new form factor uh, that I can detach from the case, and so I could pop this off. I've got the XPS right here. It's a little bit thicker than an iPad, but still rather narrow, and I mean, just a great looking device. It has uh, two USB Type-Cs on the side, which is one more than the iPad has, and it has pretty good speakers on both sides as well, and then it magnetically attaches to the keyboard case and then I can fold it up like so, and it's a very compact unit that I can carry around. And so my general usage uh, is, is really no different between these two devices. The main thing is that the battery life does exceed, uh, the iPad's battery life does exceed the battery life that I typically would get out of the XPS. And part of that's hard to really, really figure out because on the XPS, I'm jumping in and doing different things. I build websites as some of the work that I do, and it's much easier for me to work on and edit websites utilizing a full desktop browser type experience, which the XPS has because of Windows 11, 
than using the versions of the browser that I can get on an iPad Pro. A lot of the websites that I build for my clients utilize some sort of a drag and drop builder and, uh, and those page builders are kind of tricky to use on an iPad. They typically don't work that well. The touch interface, they're not designed for that and uh, it's, it's just a challenge. Where on the XPS, it's been great. So I find myself doing heavier lifting jobs and tasks on the XPS because I can. Uh, but that doesn't give me the full story. I mean, battery life is one thing. It has good battery life, not nearly as good a battery life as the iPad, but that also comes down to full operating system versus operating system that only does one thing, which is run an iPad. So other things that I find myself doing from a tablet is editing photos. I use Adobe Lightroom, and I like to use Adobe Lightroom because it's cross-platform. doesn't matter whether I'm on an iPad, a Windows device, an iPhone, an Android device, a tablet of some other make. I mean, Android tablets, it's going to work across the board, and I love that about it. So when it comes to going and editing photos, I want something that's fast. I can get my images into it quickly. I can edit them and export them and get them to where I need them to go. And I felt limited at times with the iPad because it doesn't have like a proper file system, which I, Apple says iPad OS is, has a proper file system. It's just not as good as a file system on a Windows device or on Mac OS. And so I find myself having issues there with trying to get files moved around to where I want them to go. And I end up using things like Dropbox to get files from one place to the other. Whereas on a device with a proper file system, I don't have to do as much jumping around. However, Adobe Lightroom is significantly slower on the XPS than it is on the iPad. I can import files extremely fast on the iPad, edit them, jump between images, and export them out in, uh, I, I don't want to say it, but it's probably about half the amount of time that I can get those things done on the Windows device. And it's because of sluggishness between moving between images, the applying of effects and stuff like that tend to just take longer on the XPS. And then when it comes to rendering out images or exporting images, that really takes a lot more time. And so the time savings of having the proper operating system with a great file system uh, probably don't outweigh the speed increase that I get out of the iPad. Now, there are some things in Lightroom, like using brushes and stuff, that just come more natural to me on, uh, on a device like this because it's not a touch-first, uh, touch-based device. It's not how it was designed, Windows. Windows is, uh, you know, primarily designed to be used with a keyboard and a mouse or a trackpad, and then touch case capabilities, of course, are built in. Whereas on an iPad, it's touch base first, and then everything else is kind of secondary. And so using brushes and stuff like that in Lightroom take thinking about things a little bit differently. And so I have to I have to think that way that I'm on an iPad and I'm not on a desktop or a laptop type of computer when making those adjustments. Now, if you are a photo editor or you are a photographer and you use Lightroom, definitely check out my free Lightroom course that I've got linked below. It's uh, geared towards the iPad, but it works on any version uh, of a computer that runs Lightroom, and it's my entire workflow. I think you'll find it pretty interesting, so check out that link below. Now, one thing that I can't do on the iPad is edit video. I use Final Cut Pro, sometimes Adobe Premiere Pro, and I've been dabbling in DaVinci Resolve a bit here and there. Now, I can't run any of those programs on the iPad, but I can run Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve on the XPS and utilize that in the same way that I would if I was on my other laptop or on a desktop. And I I really like being able to do that. Now it's not, performance-wise, it's not powerful enough to do most of that. Playing back video in an editor is sometimes choppy and, and has issues. I definitely have to choke things down a bit to make it run on this device, but being able to do those things is great. If I was out and about and all I had was my XPS with me, I could jump into a video project, make a little edit, save it, and then maybe render it out depending on the size of the project. That might take a while. But I could definitely make that edit and get that done or look into whatever that issue was because the device allows me to do that because it has Windows 11. I also tend to edit my podcasts on the iPad because I just really like using Ferrite and it's a simple to use application uh, that gets the job done for me when I only have a couple of audio tracks. 
but if I'm editing something more complex, I can't really do that easily on the iPad and I have to go with something like my laptop, but on the XPS I can definitely do that. Now there were a few things that were really surprising to me about the XPS. I mean, Throughout the week I have a few video calls that I do with clients and I tend to use actually this camera connected to my, my computer to do those. But in times that I'm not in front of this setup and I'm somewhere else, I would use my iPad. And I do like the iPad's uh, camera capability to follow you around. I think that's kind of a neat feature, but I've never been impressed with the camera quality out of the iPad. The first time that I did a video call on the XPS, I was pleasantly surprised. The video looked so good in comparison to the iPad. The fact that the camera doesn't follow me around, I really don't care. I actually would prefer to have good video quality over a camera that follows me around. And most of the time I'm just sitting here anyways, and so it's just kind of weird when the camera is moving side to side as I move my head side to side ever so slightly. This is the XPS 13 2-in-1 front-facing camera shooting video, and this is the audio captured from its internal microphone. This is the front-facing camera on the iPad Pro 12.9-inch M1, and this is the internal microphone capturing the audio. Now the back camera, or the rear-facing camera on the iPad, of course, it has the LiDAR, and it has the two different cameras, and it's pretty good. But I will say the cameras on the back of the XPS are great as well. I typically don't ever use those back cameras for anything, but the front-facing cameras for video conferencing, definitely really good on the XPS. Microsoft and Dell, they all understand that you're going to be in a lot of video calls, and Dell understood that they needed to put a decent one on the XPS and the XPS has it in the proper location versus where the iPad has it, which is over on the left-hand side. And I think that's just the, the worst place to put a camera because nobody that I know is holding their iPad in portrait mode unless they're talking to their grandchildren. So before I finalize my thoughts on these devices, let me just talk about the functionality of actually using them. Now the XPS folds up really nicely. You've got a magnetic type case here that folds up. It's got uh, the ability to kind of flip back and that's how you get your kickstand. Essentially it's flipping that back. So I have to put the keyboard down first and then I have to flip this back and then it has a couple of different angles in which uh, I can connect it and so if I want this to be straight up and down I can do that I can have more or less of an angle and it just finds different magnets to kind of latch into and I like the angles that they chose that's pretty good but on the iPad I can really easily fold it up like this and then open it in just one motion, as long as I have the iPad with the Magic Keyboard case. Of course, the iPad has uh, the other more standard case that um, doesn't have a trackpad, and it just folds out, and you have to kind of set the iPad where you want it to go for the adjustable height. But the Magic Keyboard case, I think, is... Uh, it's magical, I guess, for lack of a better term, because it's just one movement to open it up, and then I can adjust the angle of my iPad very easily, and I have micro adjustments essentially here, not just where the magnet is going to, to kind of connect into place. So I think, like, ergonomics-wise, I like the iPad because even the Magic Keyboard case pops the iPad up a little bit, which most tablets and laptops that are smaller, you find yourself just really looking down a lot, and the iPad helps you look up just a little bit more. Not much, but just a little bit more, and I like that about the iPad. Uh, the case that's on the XPS can be a little bit cumbersome at times just because of the multiple actions it takes to get that case opened up. Now, also to mention, if you are using this on your lap, this is very sturdy here. This is a very sturdy setup. Uh, I can't wobble anything here. It's very rigid. And setting that on my legs, if I'm on the couch or I'm using it in a laptop format because it's on my lap, this is very flimsy. The uh, case here and the keyboard, very, very flimsy. <laughs> and things tend to just kind of fall off and get disconnected. And I'm so glad that that didn't fall and eat the floor. Ergonomics wise and just comfort of use definitely goes to the iPad as long as you have this keyboard case. If you don't have the Magic Keyboard case with the trackpad, 
then all you have is either an on-screen keyboard or if you have the other more traditional keyboard case, you don't have a trackpad and all you have is a keyboard and you have to tap the screen a lot. I think the iPad definitely with the Magic Keyboard case with the trackpad is the only way to go. But the XPS still, it does live in that space between a tablet, a full functional tablet, and a full laptop that can be utilized in either way. So to conclude my thoughts here, for me, I think the iPad is probably the better overall device just because of its flexibility and I'm more predominantly on that ecosystem. The iPad does fall short in a couple of ways when it comes to software that I would wanna use, but I can do that on a laptop. It is a device that I can have as a tablet, it's not going to replace my laptop. It's also not going to replace a desktop computer. Whereas the XPS 13 2-in-1 can replace the fact that you have to have a laptop because it is traditionally a laptop in the way that it operates while still having tablet type components such as a touchscreen and the ability to detach from the keyboard completely. So if you are more in the Windows camp, I think the XPS is probably the best option because it checks all the boxes of a laptop and it checks just about all the boxes of a tablet as well. And the XPS is a fantastic device with great cameras, it has great battery life, and it has really good performance for what it is. The iPad being, of course, more powerful in the sense that it does perform better in the applications that are available for it, but you're going to be limited depending on the things that you do and your inability to install applications on it like you'd be able to on the XPS or even if you had a MacBook Pro or like a Mac laptop that ran Mac OS, being able to install full versions of software on there, something that you can't do on the iPad. So it's really gonna come down to your use case and how you see utilizing these devices. For me, <clears throat> For me, since I recognize that both of these devices would not replace my more powerful laptop, I would choose the iPad just because of the ecosystem and the speed in which the apps that do run on the iPad run. If I was wanting to replace my laptop with something and just go desktop all the way, then I would probably go with the XPS because it gives me full version of Windows 11 and a lot more flexibility there. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Are you XPS or are you iPad? Let me know what your thoughts are. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. Subscribe to the channel so you can get notified when I put out new videos. And I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.